is Grace from Brock, and welcome back to another episode of FinTips, sponsored by First Ontario Credit Union. Today, Mark is with us again, and if you've been tuning in, you'll know that Mark has been answering some questions about personal finances and managing our money and giving us some great tips. So Mark is from First Ontario Credit Union, a local credit union right here in Niagara and across Southern Ontario. So thanks so much for joining us, Mark. Yeah, thanks for having me, Grace. And I just wanted to give a, a quick, uh, I guess, thanks. And I, I, I think it's amazing um, that Brock is investing in their students' education when it comes to financial literacy and giving a forum to everybody to become educated and become more informed as they're starting what can be a very difficult financial journey. We've been chatting about some important topics when it comes to students, their finances, and their education, and it's been great. But there's one question I have that I've just been thinking about. Now, what exactly is a credit union? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, Grace, and, and I'll admit I actually had the same question about 12 years ago before I came into uh, the credit union environment. So uh, the short answer in the simplest terms is a credit union is a financial institution, uh, just like a bank. Uh, so we offer all the same products and services, uh, whether it's savings accounts, checking accounts, uh, loans, lines of credit, both personal, small business, commercial. Uh, you can do your banking the way you would with a bank, whether it's through online banking, the mobile app, you know, e-transfers, all that stuff. So um, in a way, we're, we're very similar to any financial institution across the country. So essentially, if there's a, a financial need you have, a credit union can meet it. Uh, one of the other differences um, is we are owned by our members. Um, so we're a cooperative, uh, you know, we, we're owned by customers and, and we call them members. Uh, anybody can join the credit union by becoming a member. Uh, and that gives us them a say in how we actually run the credit union and, um, and what we use our profits for. So as anybody can become a member of a credit union like First Ontario, uh, there are actually two types of credit unions. There's a closed bond credit union where you have to be a group um, of an organization uh, or a group of individuals like teachers uh, or an open bond credit union like First Ontario or, or many others in the region. Um, First Ontario actually started as a closed bond credit union with Stelco uh, Credit Union and St. Catharines Auto Workers and through a number of mergers and growth and, and rebranding and name changes, uh, we've become First Ontario Credit Union um, because the idea at the time was that there was more needs in the community outside of those closed groups that the credit union wanted to help. I didn't realize all the history that First Ontario has here in Niagara. So I do know that a traditional bank um, has deposit insurance protection. Now, can a credit union protect my money in the same way? Yeah, it's really important to know the difference. And actually, that's a really common question that comes up when new members are, are talking to us. Are my deposits safe? Um, so with uh, the CDIC or the Canadian Deposit Insurance Corporation that supports the banks uh, under a federal regulation charter, uh, their deposits are guaranteed up to $100,000. We're provincially regulated by the Financial Services uh, Financial Service Regulatory Authority, which uh, we call FISRA, um, and our deposits are actually insured up to $250,000. Uh, so that's for non-registered products. Reg registered products like RSPs and RIFs are fully guaranteed uh, by the, the uh, provincial uh, government through FISRA. One more important thing to note is that there's no history in Canada of a credit union failing. Uh, so as a cooperative system, we tend to take care of each other as well. Oh, that's great. And what else makes a credit union different than a traditional bank? So the biggest difference for me is what I usually call uh, profits for a higher purpose. So what is the motivation of the corporation? Uh, banks are run by shareholders uh, and uh, they need to meet the returns and expectations of the marketplace and they get asked hard questions by the analysts from uh, you know large investors if they're not making their targets. Credit unions are here to serve their membership and the profits go back to the membership. Uh, that can look a number of different ways whether that's through a direct patronage or dividend or what we do in our communities. Uh, First Ontario, I think I mentioned last time, is really focused on affordable housing and food insecurity. Mm -hmm. And we put our profits towards the causes that directly impact our communities. One of the other things is, um, as a member, you get a vote. So whether you have 
hundred million dollars with the credit union or one dollar with the credit union, you have the same power of that vote. And that vote goes to electing your board of directors uh, to represent your communities. Oh, that's great. That's a very important distinction. It really, it really always comes down to community. So when I, I actually spent my first 13 years in, in the financial institution in our charter bank, and you'd work hard and then you'd see the bank make investments uh, in another country, let's say, mm -hmm. and maybe that's successful, maybe that's not. Well, here I know exactly what's happening with the profits of the organization that I work for. Uh, and in my, in my role as the COO, I actually get a say in that. Um, we have the Goodman Lemonade program with Brock. We are sponsoring this program with FinTips, helping financial education and literacy. Uh, we've worked for, for, with affordable housing with the Bethlehem Group here in St. Catharines, actually building 127 beds. So there's 400 individuals who are in need of affordable housing space in the communities that everybody uh, kind of listening to this lives and breathes and works and educates. Um, and that's where our money is going to. So another thing for me is ESG and CSR. And if you don't know what those acronyms stand for, it's um, Environmental Social Governments and, so and Corporate Social Responsibility. Um, so what that is, is really the footprint you leave uh, behind as a business. And what we're seeing, what I'm seeing regularly is with the younger generation, uh, there's a big push, there's a rallying cry um, to understand who you're doing business with and what they stand for. Where do they put their money? Do they put their money where their mouth is? Are they greenwashing? Uh, and all those buzz terms you, you hear uh, out in society. So um, one thing about a credit union is, is we're, we're local. Our footprint's a bit smaller and you really have the ability to see and test and know where those dollars are going. Um, so again, we're not driven by shareholders' returns. We're, we're driven by the impact and the good we can do in our communities. Um, and honestly, that's the biggest difference of being part of a credit union. That's amazing, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for teaching us so much about what a credit union is and, and the distinction between that and a traditional bank. I really appreciate you giving us that clarification and then all the amazing things that a credit union is actually involved in and supporting in our community. I think that's awesome. As always, I encourage everyone, if you have any personal finance questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future podcast episodes, to please send us your ideas to communications at firstontario.com. Thanks again, Mark. Thanks for having me, Grace.